the next speaker, the final one before the break, is uh, Manuel Luna. The title of the presentation is uh, Toward a Technique for Automatic Detection and Characterization of Oscillations in Solar Filaments. So I'm going to give you a five minute warning. Okay. Okay. Hello, good morning. Uh, this is Manuel Luna from the Balearic Islands University in, in Mallorca, Spain. And I'm not going to show you a result in the sense a solution of this kind of problem because I'm going to show you the problem itself. Okay? And the, the title is Towards a Technique for Automatic Detection and Characterization of Oscillation in Solar Filaments. And this is our problem. This is the, the image of the sun in H alpha, where we can see the filaments here, here. And we have the, mainly the emission of the chromosphere. In this plot, uh, I'm show, show you, showing the, the oscillation of this filament, in the, and the oscillation is, is in the direction perpendicular to the line of sight. It's in the plane of the sky or in the plane of the screen. Okay, it's a displacement of the of the of the filament. Here, this is a movie, and go, uh, a flare produces the, the perturbation of this filament that will move back and forth, and you will see the oscillations. Now, uh, the the oscillation is very clear. Okay, let's let's see again. It's a partial eruption that produces the oscillation of this, of this part, remaining part of the, of the filament. The oscillation is very clear. The, the amplitude of the oscillation is 80 kilometers per second, and the period is around 70, 70 minutes. Okay. This is, these uh, events are, are, are common in the, in the, in the um, well, are rel rel relatively uh, common, and it's an old topic. Uh, the first observation were, were in the in the beginning of the 20th century, and the relevance of this oscillation is that with the prominent seismology, that is the combination of uh, modeling and the observations, we can in infer parameters that are uh, hard to measure by direct uh, means. Uh, so far, the detection have been uh, done by visual inspection of the data. Okay. There is no um, um, automatic techniques for, for this detection. The motivation of this work is to analyze all the da data we have in, in H alpha, in, especially in, in the GONG uh, network data, in order to see uh, the, pos the possible um, um, variation of this kind of motions during the solar cycle. The idea is that the the prominences are supported by this kind of flask ropes, we can see here the, the filament, and the motions are related with, the, with these structures. Then, uh, probably, these structures are related with the global evolution of the magnetic field of the sun, and the differential rotation and the uh, surface motion of, uh, uh, of, the, uh, and the, of the sun produce this shearing, producing that uh, the, the flux producing the flux ropes that at the end uh, supports the prominence. In 2018, we did a catalog of this kind of oscillation during the solar maximum, in, during six months in 2014, and we found a, a lot of, um, of filament oscillations. With this is the the distribution of the velocities, but the most relevant thing is this, uh, this plot. Here, we have the number of events as a function of the period. And we see that we have a strong peak, uh, 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 a large peak in, in 60 minutes. Okay. Why these 60 minutes? We wonder if this uh, period, the, uh, this kind of average period, changed during the solar cycle. Then the idea is to analyze the, the, all the data sets we have in, in Gong, that is more than 10 years, and we have images for every minute, and try to see, to detect oscillation, and also parameterize these oscillations. Well, this is what, 
this is the the result from the catalog, and this is how we did in in that in that in that catalog. We have the filament here, a flare is happening is is, is here that produces the displacement of the cool plasma that moves back and forth. Following the motion of the of the cool plasma, we can uh, we produce this artificial slit, and we take the intensity along this slit, and we put here the intensity as a function of time. This dark band is essentially uh, the cut of the, of the slit with the, with the cool plasma. And we can see perfectly well the oscillation. This is the time distance diagram, okay? or time distance technique. We have here the displacement and also the, the velocities. But this is a, a very limited uh, method because we did by eye, checking all the data. And also, we want to expand this uh, catalog of only six months to a larger dat data set and also um, without any bias associated to the, to the observer. And we tested uh, the filament tracking. It's, it's something similar to cementation, but it's uh, with, without much learning. But we found that the that the oscillations, or we, we track the so the centroid of the filament, or some characteristics of the filament, is very noisy. It is hard to follow. The second uh, technique we tested is the spectral analysis. In this in this uh, figure, we see um, an active region, and it seems that in the intensity fluctuates in, in this region. You can see the, the intensity fluctuates in this region. This is uh, from um, EUV images. It's not gone, okay? But it is just, it is an, an example from Frederic Haucher. Um, they detected a positive detection because the, the power spectral density the, for the, from the Fourier transform is larger than some threshold. Then they have positive detection here. But we have a problem. We have a vection of the cool plasma. It's just moving back and forth, and we don't have uh, intensity fluctuations of the cool plasma. It's just a displacement of the plasma. Okay, and then, but we apply the technique, and I'm going to show you uh, how we did. Uh, is uh, sorry for for the letters. Is uh, I don't know what happens. Uh, we publish in, in the, the past year uh, this paper where we apply uh, this technique, spectral technique. How we did it, or what, what happened? Why we can apply this technique? The idea is that plasma is mostly advected. We don't have intensity fluctuations. However, there is no intrinsic fluctuation of the intensity. This is a mimicking of the oscillation. We have the chromosphere here in white, and the black represents the filament. Okay. Then we are going to measure the intensity here in this red dot. Okay. We see the motion, and this is the intensity. It's moving from one, that is the chromospheric, to zero. Okay. In this in this red spot, around it seems that around the, the filament there is a periodic um, fluctuations of the intensity because the filament produces uh, periodic uh, occultations of the chromosphere. It is also happening here and in the other side. This is a, a, a um, an oscillation is uh, 45 degrees in this direction. The period is 60 minutes, and it has a damping time. You can see that it's not trivial. It's not a periodic. It seems not a periodic uh, fluctuations. Okay, in this case, this is good. Um, this is the problem. This is the half of the period because it's at the center. It crosses two times during one cycle. But okay, we have. We found a very good uh, result. If this is uh, the motion of the, of the cool plasma, this is the extremes of the, the motion. 
we have, we, we, if we apply uh, the fast Fourier transform for every single pixel, and we uh, make the, the square of this power spectral, uh, we have the, this power spectral density, there is a strong emission around the filament okay, of the power spectral density with the same period of the oscillations. Okay? And this is uh, what we found in this uh, mimicking of the oscillation. Then we applied uh, this technique to the gong data and we contrasted, we compared with the, with the results of the, of, the, of the catalog. We use the gong data because it is H alpha and it's very clear to see the filament and the chromosphere. And the gong is composed of six uh, telescopes around the globe, and then we can uh, have a more or less continuous uh, observation of the sun during the day and all year. Okay? And this is, we apply this technique. Then we analyze the, the power spectral density of every single pixel. Okay? Uh, using the fast Fourier transform, and we model the noise, the background noise level, as a thin function, as uh, is a combination of red noise plus white noise. Okay? This is a, a single pixel, and we can see here uh, the, 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 the power spectral density, and the red one is the, the background noise. It's fitted every, for every single pixel is fitted. And then we have detection, if this power spectral density is larger than m times the, the background noise, okay, and we use this uh, this expression for the for for m is the number of times larger than the background noise than the noise, and we have a confidence level of 95 percent. Okay, this confidence level is this one is the dot uh, dot dashed line. In this case, we have a very strong peak here. It's just one example. I'm not telling you where is it, it is. It's in this filament here. And we have a very strong peak. Then we apply uh, the technique for the first event of the catalog. The filament is behind. It's a combination of the power spectral density. Okay, We can see a strong emission around the filament with the, uh, with the period that that this is the same that we detected in the in the catalog, and also the white line represents the slit we use to track the motion. We can see that we have the two lobes, these two uh, regions around the the path of the motion. Okay. Um, what more? Uh, one and two. Okay. Here we are showing the the intensity in, in the mean intensity in region one and two. And this is the largest pixel, the large PSD in, in the single pixel is, is around here. And we can see a very strong peak. And the, the, the peak has uh, almost 50 times uh, the noise level. Okay. It's very strong. Uh, this is another event. We can see also uh, very good uh, the oscillation here with a strong power emission. And the, the intensity fluctuation and the ratio is, is more, more than uh, 100 times than the background noise. It's, it's, it's very powerful. And also, it's in agreement with the, with the catalog. Uh, we apply this technique also uh, for other events. For example, in this case, the, the oscillation is very complex. We, ha we have a lot of, uh, it's, it's very large uh, filament with a lot, a, lot, a lot of regions with several periods. And in this plot, we are showing, I'm showing the period for every single pixel, okay? This, and in this case, we can see the, the period of the oscillation of the, the filament, okay? You measure the, the, the period here, it has uh, more or less 80 something minutes, okay? And in the, in the, the, the orange one, it more or less 100 minutes oscillations. Uh, we can compare also with the time distance diagram, and we can see that uh, it's a very complex motion with several periodicities. And then this technique tells us that we can apply for a complex um, oscillations too. Limitation. 
the technique is not working well for frequencies larger than one millihertz. It's necessary to a better modeling of the of in this range of frequencies. Uh, sorry. Uh, we have not found any technique to, de de to de determine the, the filament uh, velocity. We cannot find the direction of the motion, the velocity, the amplitude, the damping time, all these parameters. And also it's not possible in, in the sense that if we apply for the full um, de that data set, we cannot associate the, oscill the oscillation with any filament. Then the idea is to apply um, deep learning techniques. Uh, and, well, and that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. You can keep that. Any questions or comments? Everybody see here for coffee? <laughs> Do we have anything online? Well, let me ask you one question. So you mentioned that at some point the method does not work well. Uh, mm -hmm. And you gave a frequency cut of, I think it was one millihertz, right? Mm -hmm. So the, uh, uh, in terms of physics, why do you think this is not working really? Because, because uh, we are um, using a, a white noise, uh, uh, noise here, but probably we have uh, P modes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, do you think it would be reasonable to try to do some denoising before trying to identify oscillations? Mm. I mean, there are methods out there. There was one presented in the previous talk, mm. actually, uh, that might be able to spare you from that particular uh, component in there so that to be able to detect oscillations because one would think that oscillations would be, I mean, uh, lower frequency oscillations would be more frequent than, you know, higher frequency ones, hmm. uh, conspicuous ones. So you might be able to link it with more physical processes mm -hmm. in the area of the filament. Yep. Just, just a suggestion. Yeah, okay, thank you. Oh, there's one. One question there. Hi. <laughs> um, when you analyze the intensity of the pixel, do you analyze all the pixels of, of the image of the whole disk? Yes. Uh, do you think would be would improve like the computational time to apply some kind of mask to the images just to keep the regions uh, surrounding like the the filaments? For example, you know that the filament is dark on the surface. Yes. yes. And then perhaps try to keep that that area and the surrounding pixels of the of the filament. True, yes, yeah, yes. Uh, there, 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 there is a there is technique. Uh, there are techniques to to apply segmentation for filaments, and then maybe we can uh, take a region of surrounding, as you said, and and apply this technique. Yeah, mm -hmm. it could be more efficient. Okay. Anything more? I think there is one question online. So, uh, Daniela, could you please unmute and uh, ask a question? Yeah, hello. I have a question. So, you mentioned that you have more complex uh, filament, uh, filament oscillation in the AA data. Isn't that simply related to just the different resolution of the data? And or the emission line characteristics So H alpha is very different from UV? So what's your take on that? Well, it's more complex because, uh, for example, you can see here that uh, it seems that you have uh, different levels of, of in, the, in, the, in the filament uh, with different direction of the oscillations. And also seems that um, different parts oscillate with different phases. This is the, the complexity. In comparing the UV, and H alpha, you can see more details in, in EUV. Uh, yeah, but isn't that due to the resolution? Because H alpha data, if I remember correctly, are very low, low, low spatial resolution. Yeah. And you are just seeing less structure because the resolution is lower, not because there's missing 
not not necessarily because the complexity of the motion is lower, I guess. Yes. Uh, well, in in H alpha, uh, the resolution is lower, but uh, the the good thing is that you don't have any other structures uh, in the line of sight. It's more clear to have to detect the the filament and also the, the oscillations. In EUV, you can see more um, structure because you have the the core of the, the threads is, is in absorption, but also you have the PCTR surrounding the, the threads. And you can see a combination of, of, of uh, dark features and, and bright features moving. And then you have more details there. OK, thank you. OK. Any further quick question or comment? If not, then let us thank Manuel and uh, all the speakers again. So this concludes session two for this morning.